Hi, I'm Paula Storm. Thanks for joining me today on my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be working on the next part of our four part series based around this gorgeous quilt called A Beautiful Life. It's completely designed by my very good friend Tammy Green from Studio T Green. And not only did she design the quilt pattern, she also designed the fabric collection as well. This fabric collection is called Forget Me Not and it's distributed worldwide by Riley Blake. Remember, you do need to buy the quilt pattern for this quilt. There's links in the comments down below where you can also order a full kit so you'll end up with a beautiful, stunning quilt just like mine. Okay, let's get started on our quilting. Now this block is a really fun block to quilt. We've broken up the whole quilt into sections and put a different design in each section to make it a bit easier for you to follow along. First up is the pinwheels. Now this is a really fun block to do. I really enjoyed quilting this one. Um, really I just broke it up into sections. So I had the flowery section and then I had the more solid um, or darker fabric sections. In the flowery sections, I decided to do some straight line quilting using my uh, handy quilter ruler. Now this one, what I've done is just gone straight out, down, I've traveled down in the seam and then back to the center. And I've done that twice. So it's really straightforward. It makes it a lot easier if you've got rulers. But to be honest, after I did the first row, I actually, um, I didn't use the rulers anymore. I found it much quicker to just freehand it. And because these blocks aren't massive, they aren't a really huge block, like um, in the hill sections a bit later on, uh, it looked okay to just freehand it. Now I must apologize, in some parts of the video, the vision is a bit hard to see. Um, it was really hard to set up the, the camera angles so that you got a really clear vision. Um, so occasionally the handlebars do block your vision a little bit, but I've tried to make it so that um, it's, it's not in really important bits. So as you can see here, I'm just traveling down in the ditch. Um, so you're really not missing much um, with that camera angle. Okay, so now we're back at the center. I've completed all of the flowery sections. It's time to go into the solid sections. In this part, I've used an arc ruler. Now I just flipped it around because I've used the markings on the ruler to kind of line up with the, the center point of um, the pinwheel. And I've used another line that's on the ruler to line me up on the outside so I get a nice, um, a nice even curve in all of the blocks. So I've gone from the center out to the corner point. Now I'm traveling up to the center and then, or the center of the side of the block. And now I'm heading back into the middle of the block. Again, I'm sorry for the loss of vision here, but it was just really impossible to hold the rulers any other way. So I've done one um, corner or one portion of the pinwheel. Now I'm going to head over to the other side and do the top corner. This one's a bit easier to see. In this portion, I've used the bigger ruler. For the next part, because the ruler wouldn't fit um, on the, the Simply 16 frame, I've actually used the center of that same ruler, the same arc ruler, um, to do that side portion. And then I've gone back to the big ruler. And there we go, that's pretty much it for these uh, the pinwheel blocks. We've got the straight edges and then we've got the curves. And that's a really fun, straightforward way um, to quilt the pinwheel block. With this quilt, I really wanted to keep it nice and flowy. So I've, I didn't want to really heavily quilt. So in the sky portion of the quilt, I've done a really nice big, um, big loop or a swirl. Uh, with a really nice long tail. Because we've got the uh, hot air balloons, I really wanted it to look like it was a really windy day. And the quilting was kind of creating these swirls um, to make it appear really windy. So to do the swirl, first off we start with a really long tail. That's really important. And we've got a really a fairly small swirl on the end of the tail. I really suggest having a look at Jamie Wallen's video on swirls. Um, he's from the Quilters Apothecary and he's got a really fantastic um, series of videos on how to do swirls. And that's kind of how this um, design came about. He kind of uses this design in more of a straight line um, format. So rather than making it an all over design, he has it kind of just in straight, um, like on, on sashings and borders. Whereas I wanted to make it an all over design. So to do that, what I did was I just echoed those swirls a huge amount of times. If I ever needed to travel, 
I would just echo the swirls that I've already done. So by having the little tiny swirls at the end um, of the tail, it gave me room to echo. Um, so that's really important and a, a really good way of creating the swirl. So here you go. See, so we've got a long tail and then a kind of a tiny swirl on the end and then I've just echoed. And you can echo as many times as you need to um, to get to the next section. So here I'm going to go into my next swirl. And because I'm kind of in open space here, I always come back along the tail, but then I've thrown in another swirl as well. So always come back along this tail before you, um, you echo. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I really wanted this quilt to be nice and flowy. I didn't want it to be over quilted and stiff because it's a child's quilt. I wanted it to be nice and open. So I've really kept those lines about a half inch apart, any closer than that, and it can make the quilt quite stiff. So once I'd finished the top portion of the quilt, of the sky portion of the quilt, I've re-rolled it on the, um, on the Simply 16 frame and I've moved down to the bottom half of the quilt. Now another thing I wanted to mention was I didn't actually outline all of the shapes until I got to them. I found with it being on the frame, if I'd outlined everything, I would have had to um, cut my thread so many times, it would have been really annoying. So I really just outlined all of my shapes um, as I got to them, but I did outline them. So when it comes to things like this little tree here, I really make sure I went all the way around that tree. Um, it's just so that it gives it a little bit of puff. Um, and then I moved on and did more echoing. So as you can see here, I've really gone back and echoed my swirls uh, before I move on to the next portion. Okay, so let's move on to the next part of the quilt. Now this part is the hills. In this section of the quilt, I really wanted some straight line quilting, but I didn't want it to all just um, blend into each other. So in this part, what I've done is I've carried the straight lines at the same angle as the fabric. So can you see in the picture how it really um, it, it defines each, um, each hill? So what I did was I got my straight edge ruler. Um, once again, another handy quilter ruler, and I highly recommend having a ruler base um, if you have this uh, Simply 16 or any of the handy quilter frames. It really makes a difference when using rulers. Um, and what I did was I just followed the edge of the piecing um, and I created these lines that were about a half an inch apart. So after I'd done one line, I would move down in the ditch or um, in, the, in the lines of the applique uh, and I would move down until my ruler was on the quarter inch mark. So taking into account the, the thickness of the, the foot and also the ruler, that gave me um, lines that were about a half an inch apart. And I found that that was a really good distance um, to keep, as I said earlier, it keeps the, the quilt nice and soft and flowy. So it's not a real uh, stiff as a board quilt. It's something that you really want to snuggle under. And I think that's really important for kids quilts to keep it nice and soft. So as I said earlier, what I've done is I've just ditch stitched in all of the application, around all of the applique shapes and then I've continued my quilting um, from there. So I haven't actually done any quilting over the applique shapes. I've always gone around the shapes and I found that just gives them a bit of a lift, a bit of puff. And sometimes if the fabrics are fairly close in colour, um, it really separates them and makes them, um, it makes them really stand out on the quilt. Okay, let's finish up the quilt now by heading over to my Sweet 16 um, and doing the borders. Now I decided to switch over to my sit down machine just to show you how I would quilt on a domestic machine or on a sit down machine. The main thing is that you are constantly moving um, or repositioning the quilt to make it as comfortable as possible for you to quilt. Now obviously I've speed it, um, sped up this video a little so that you can uh, follow along uh, for the whole process. But I just wanted to show you that you are constantly changing your hands, changing the position and the way you're holding the quilt um, to make it easier for you to get a perfect design. Now once again I've used a similar um, a swirl design on the borders as I did in the sky portion of the quilt. And once again I've used Jamie Wallen's swirl design um, for these borders. I just found it was a perfect fit uh, for the borders. Because we have quite busy fabrics in the borders, you weren't really going to see any detail quilting. So there was no point in doing lots of amazing ruler work or really fancy designs. 
I just wanted to keep it about the same uh, distance apart as we've done in the rest of the quilt. So again, about half an inch distance between all of the quilting lines. So I've just done that beautiful swirl design on all of this, uh, the borders, except for the corners. What I did in the corners is I just went in and I ditch stitched around those uh, cute little hearts on the corners. And that's it. That's the complete finished quilt. I really hope you've enjoyed doing this quilt along with me. And once again, thank you so much to Tammy Green who designed the beautiful fabric, the pattern, and to Riley Blake for giving us this beautiful fabric to use. So why don't you head along to your local quilt shop and buy some today. If they don't have it in stock, you can ask your quilt shop to order it in. In Australia from Millhouse Collections and in the US and most other countries from Riley Blake. Thanks for joining us. I'll see you again next time.